Have you ever considered how a paradise island could become the setting of the deadliest aviation disaster in history? Nestled in the azure waters of the Atlantic Ocean, Tenerife, a Spanish island, is a haven of sun-soaked beaches and breathtaking landscapes. It's 1977, and Tenerife is a bustling tourist hotspot, but beneath the surface of this idyllic paradise, a tragic story is about to unfold. This island, known for its beauty, was about to witness a devastating event. To understand the gravity of what happened, we first need to delve into the world of aviation and Tenerife's Los Rodeos Airport. The latter half of the 20th century saw an unprecedented boom in commercial aviation. As planes became faster and more efficient, they also became larger, carrying more passengers than ever before. Amidst this backdrop of rapid growth and technological advancement, Los Rodeos Airport emerged as a critical hub in the Canary Islands. Nestled in a valley and surrounded by mountains, it was a unique location for an airport. Despite its challenging topography, it was well-equipped to handle the influx of international flights. The airport boasted a single runway, a feature that, while common at the time, would later prove to be a crucial factor in the events that unfolded. As we shall see, the very structure of this airport played a significant role in the disaster. On the 27th of March, 1977, a series of events unfolded that culminated in an unimaginable tragedy. Picture this, two jumbo jets, a KLM Boeing 747 and a Pan Am Boeing 747, both giants of the sky, descending into Los Rodeos Airport, Tenerife, on a day that would etch itself into the annals of aviation history. The KLM flight, brimming with eager passengers, had just arrived from Amsterdam, while the Pan Am flight had made its way from Los Angeles and New York. Both aircraft were directed to the same taxiway, a routine occurrence in any airport. They were merely two colossal birds sharing a common path, each oblivious to the dire fate that awaited them. As the day unfolded, an eerie sense of normalcy prevailed. The planes operated as usual, the crews performed their duties, and the passengers sat back, looking forward to their journeys. Unbeknownst to anyone, these two planes were on a collision course. Weather, often an uncontrollable factor, significantly contributed to the disaster. On the fateful day of March 27, 1977, the weather at Los Rodeos Airport was far from ideal. As the day progressed, the skies above Tenerife grew increasingly hostile. A blanket of clouds descended upon the island, obscuring the sun and casting an eerie gloom over the landscape. The airport, nestled in the heart of Tenerife, was not spared. Visibility at Los Rodeos deteriorated rapidly as a thick fog rolled in, reducing visual range to a mere few hundred feet. This fog, stubborn and unyielding, refused to lift, creating a hazy curtain that made navigation on the ground a perilous endeavor. Pilots were forced to rely heavily on their instruments and radio communication, their eyesight rendered almost useless by the impenetrable mist. As the day wore on, the fog grew denser, the visibility poorer. No break in the weather was forthcoming, thick fog engulfed the airport setting the stage for the impending disaster. In an eerie silence, two jumbo jets collided on the foggy runway. It was a moment of sheer terror, a moment that would forever be etched in the annals of aviation history. On one side of the coin was the KLM flight, a Boeing 747, ready to lift off into the foggy abyss, oblivious of the imminent danger. The captain, seasoned with years of flying experience, was unaware that his path was not clear. On the other side of the coin, the Pan Am flight, another Boeing 747, was still taxiing along the runway, struggling to navigate through the thick fog. The crew, despite their best efforts, couldn't clear the runway in time. The misfortune was inevitable. The KLM flight, accelerating for takeoff, crashed into the Pan Am flight. The catastrophic collision engulfed both aircraft in flames, turning the runway into a horrifying scene. In a matter of seconds, hundreds of lives were lost. In the wake of the disaster, rescue teams and authorities scrambled to respond. The immediate aftermath was chaotic, as emergency personnel raced against time to reach survivors. The scale of the incident was unprecedented, and every available resource was mobilized. Firefighters, paramedics, and volunteers worked tirelessly, their actions driven by a collective determination to save lives. Simultaneously, aviation authorities descended on Los Rodeos Airport. Amid the wreckage, they began the daunting task of piecing together the events that led to the tragedy. With the runway scarred by the catastrophic collision, they meticulously collected evidence, marking out the starting point of a complex investigation. 
the local community showed remarkable resilience in the face of adversity. Their homes became temporary shelters. Their hands reached out to comfort the bereaved and the traumatized. A small island, previously known for its serene beauty, was now the epicenter of an international crisis. The enormity of the disaster demanded an intensive investigation. Multiple factors contributed to the disaster, but two stand out, human error and communication failures. Let's start with the human error. On that fateful day, despite the foggy conditions, the KLM pilot decided to take off without clearance from the control tower, a decision that would prove catastrophic. Now let's move on to communication failures. The heavy fog made visibility poor and the control tower was unable to see the two planes on the runway. Miscommunication between the pilot and the control tower further intensified the situation. The control tower gave instructions, but the KLM pilot misunderstood them due to language barriers and poor radio quality, leading to the ill-fated decision to take off. The Pan Am plane was still taxiing on the runway, completely unaware of the impending disaster. Both these elements, human error and communication failures, formed a deadly cocktail that led to the Tenerife disaster. The disaster left a profound mark on the victims, survivors, and their families. The loss of life was staggering, with hundreds of people perishing in an instant. The survivors, while fortunate to escape with their lives, were left to grapple with the trauma of the event, the memory of which would be forever seared into their minds. The emotional toll was immense, with the shockwaves of grief and loss rippling out to touch countless others around the world. In the wake of the disaster, the legal repercussions began to unfold. Questions of responsibility and blame loomed large as investigations delved into the causes of the crash. Lawsuits were launched, culminating in settlements and judgments that would forever alter the landscape of aviation law. The Tenerife disaster was not only a tragedy, but also a turning point. It was a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of safety in aviation, prompting significant changes in the industry that continue to reverberate today. The official investigation into the disaster brought to light numerous areas for improvement in the aviation industry. The process was exhaustive, involving multiple aviation bodies from across the globe. The burning question was, how could two jumbo jets on the same runway collide? The answer, it turned out, was a tragic cocktail of unfortunate circumstances, miscommunication, and human error. The investigators concluded that the primary cause was the KLM captain's premature takeoff without clearance, compounded by severe weather conditions that limited visibility. Simultaneously, the Pan Am crew's inability to exit the runway in time due to miscommunication with the control tower played a significant role. These findings led to a profound reassessment of safety practices within the aviation industry. The disaster underscored the need for clearer communication protocols, better crew training, and stricter adherence to takeoff and landing procedures. The lessons learned from the disaster were significant and far-reaching. In the aftermath of the disaster, the aviation industry underwent substantial changes. The Tenerife disaster was a wake-up call that spurred critical reforms and improvements. It made the industry realize the importance of clear and effective communication, prompting a shift towards the use of standardized phraseology in air traffic control worldwide. Additionally, the accident highlighted the need for better cockpit protocols. This led to the development of crew resource management, a training protocol that emphasizes teamwork, decision-making, and communication among flight crew members. Moreover, technological advancements were made to improve visibility and aircraft detection on runways. Ground proximity warning systems became standard installations on commercial aircraft, reducing the chances of similar collisions in the future. The disaster also led to the implementation of more stringent rules for takeoff clearances, ensuring that no plane takes off without explicit permission from air traffic control. The Tenerife disaster, while tragic, led to safer skies for all. The memory of the Tenerife disaster lives on in the hearts of many. Stories of courage and resilience echo through the years, a testament to the indomitable human spirit. The world pays tribute to the lives lost, with memorials and ceremonies held to honor the victims. These remembrances serve as a poignant reminder of the tragedy, but also of the unity and strength that emerged from it. We remember not just the disaster, but the lives lived and lost. The Tenerife disaster stands as a stark reminder of the importance of safety in aviation. The legacy of this event reverberates in the industry, leading to significant changes in communication protocols, operational procedures, 
and technological advancements. This tragic incident has shaped modern aviation, driving the industry to learn from its past and strive for a safer future. The echoes of Tenerife continue to reverberate, reminding us of the cost of negligence and the value of vigilance.